Welcome everybody, this is Indian Preservation. I'm Cindy Van Corse and I'm so glad you can join us today. We're here to talk about food preservation, but a lot of people find it very intimidating. So we're gonna start off kind of easy. Now, before we begin, we're gonna set our definition for food preservation. And this is the way to safely, and we're gonna stress safely, extend the shelf life of your food. And at the same time, we wanna retain its quality. And that's gonna be your color, your flavor, your texture, your aroma, the appearance, and as much as possible, the nutritional value. What is the benefit in saving your food if it's not good to eat? I want you to think about food preservation as an investment. You know, you bring your paycheck home and you look at the stub and you see the government has taken, you know, 20% out for taxes and this amount for FICA and then you've got all these other deductions. So we're kind of used to coming home and not having the whole package. And we've done that with our food over the last several years, but we're gonna change that thinking and we're gonna start off easy. When I go to the grocery store and I come home, the first thing I do is I take my meat out of the packaging that it has in the grocery store. It is not recommended that you put that particular package in the freezer because it's not going to protect your meat. So I bought a three pound package of hamburger meat and I broke it up into some hamburger patties that I've laid out here and I've laid them on parchment paper. What I'm going to do is I wanna keep them separated. So I'm gonna fold them over like this and like this, and I'll just tear this in half. And I have a Ziploc bag that I keep my patties in. And all I do is date the corner so the oldest ones come out and the new ones go in the package. put the old one back in. We'll probably use that for dinner tomorrow. Seal this up, squeeze out as much air as possible. Because the meat's not frozen, I'll put it on this little tray and slip it into the freezer. And I also took part of that package and I do the same thing and I'll make meatballs out of it. My granddaughter loves to come over and she loves meatballs. Uh, all kinds of ways. She likes them in a brown gravy, in a tomato gravy, just as long as she has meatballs. It's fun food for kids to eat. And I'll throw those on a tray. I put these on a plate and these two will go into the freezer. And I'm only gonna let them, both of these freeze for a couple of hours and then I could vacuum seal the packages like I've done here. Now this is actually Italian sausage and my husband loves um, meatball soup made with Italian sausage. So I've got these already measured out and I let them thaw. They thaw pretty quickly because they're small pieces and then they're easy and quick to brown and soup's on the table in about 45 minutes. So that takes care of your meat. You can buy meat in bulk and package up for all kinds of meals. I do the same thing with chicken breasts. I'll flatten my chicken breasts out to probably a half an inch thick. It's perfect to throw on the grill for grilled chicken sandwiches or grilled chicken salad. Uh, when the granddaughter comes over, we can make chicken tenders for her. So meat, that's what I like to do with meat. Fresh produce is another thing that we often throw scraps away and you don't wanna do that because you can do a lot with your fresh produce. Here we had uh, a party at the house the other day and we had some leftover bell peppers. I just chopped them up, I threw them on this plate. They'll go in the freezer to flash freeze for a few minutes and then we'll take them out and put them in a Ziploc bag. And the same thing with an onion. And I lost my knife. <laughs> and we'll do the same thing with the onion. And I had some meat laying on here so I'm gonna flip this board over. <laughs> And I'm gonna go ahead and start chopping my onion. And the onion skins on this are pretty clean. Don't throw this away. I'm gonna put this over here in my little bag with my other frozen vegetable scraps. And I've got tomatoes and cabbage and 
Uh, we had peas for dinner the other night. We had a couple tablespoons of those left over. I have them in the bag and I'm gonna put this in my instant pot for 35 minutes and I'll make a vegetable stock out of this when I get a couple of bags filled. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut up these onions into small pieces. And I love this because when we come home after a long day at the magic shop, all the prep work is done and we can have dinner on the table quickly. And I love this type of preserving because it doesn't require any special equipment. And it makes the best use of the foods that you buy. So we'll get this chopped up quickly and set this on this plate to flash freeze. Now one of the things that you want to remember when you're flash freezing is that you want to kind of dry your produce a little bit. So I'm going to spread it out here and my hands are clean. I wash them. And then just take a paper towel and kind of dab it a little bit. And this helps your vegetables not stick together when they're frozen. When you put them in the Ziploc bag, then they'll be loose and you can measure them out accurately and they'll be perfect for your soups and stews and meatloafs, anything that you cook. You will not want to put this in like a fresh salad, such as a potato salad or a macaroni salad. Okay. One of the other things that you can put away is citrus peels. These have a multitude of uses. Um, in 2005, my neighbor came over and said her mother-in-law wanted me to look for orange peel in the grocery store. She lived, lived up in Amish territory and was not able to find any because of the freezes that we'd had that winter in Florida. So I found a small bottle and it cost $5. Well, two years later, she came back and asked me for more orange peel. And I wasn't worried about that because you know I knew I was gonna get some really great Christmas cookies. And that same bottle, two years later, was $8. And I thought, this is crazy. Why would anybody spend that much money on orange peel? So I researched and found a way to make my own orange peel. So after we have our oranges for breakfast, I slice them up in thin slices. And I just, with a very sharp knife, carefully cut off the white pith. And you want to get as much of that off as possible so you're down to the orange peel and you know you're close when you can see the little holes in the peel itself and as long as you hold your knife flat and keep that peel flat it comes off pretty easy and what I do with these is I'll set my oven to about 125, 150 degrees for about 10 minutes. Then I'll shut the oven off and leave the uh, oven light on. And I'll lay these on a tray and let them dry overnight in the oven. The next day, I'll take uh, those orange peels and I'll put them in a blender or a coffee grinder and make this beautiful little orange dust. And this is perfect for flavoring up chocolate or uh, even vegetables, it just adds a nice, rich flavor, and it doesn't take very much. Um, uh, cranberry orange cookies with shortbread is a delicious recipe to make with this orange peel. And I'll just take this and pour it in an old spice bottle and put it in my pantry to use for baking. And three orange peels, the peels from three oranges fills one bottle. And to think, I was paying $8 for this and we were gonna throw these away. What a great way to stretch your dollar. One of the other things that you can do is you can take your orange peels and you can dry them and still leave the, the white pith on the inside. And I let these whole peels dry out overnight and I'll take a bottle of vinegar and just fill this up to the top of the bottle, right about where the neck is. 
and I'll let this with the lid sit on my counter for 10 days and I'll come by and shake it every day. And after 10 days, you'll start to see the orange color leach out into the vi vinegar and you'll smell that orange fragrance and you just strain this, throw the peels away and this is a perfect way to degrease de your stove or your vent hood or anything in your house or your kitchen. So it's been a couple of hours and our peppers are frozen and right now we're gonna put them into a Ziploc bag in the freezer. Again, the, because they're flash frozen, which means they're frozen flat and they'll separate easier. So I have a quart size bag and it fits perfectly into these little coffee canisters and it holds them open so you don't have to wait for your husband to come home to help you load this up in a bag. And this works perfect for broths and chicken soups and things that you have left over. So I'm just gonna scrape these peppers into the bag and I'll do the same things with my onions later when they come out. And boy, is it hot here in Texas. It's not taking these things long to thaw out. And I like using my canning funnel because it makes loading this so much easier and your um, food doesn't fall all over the kitchen table. And I'll roll this up, squeeze the air out. And when I go to put them back in the freezer, I will make sure that I label that this is mixed uh, red and yellow and orange bell peppers. And when I go to make my next casserole, I'll have these easy to use. Now, just so you know, this works well for the 14 ounce can, but the larger coffee canister is a perfect fit for the gallon bags. So if you need to load something into freezer bags that's larger, this is a perfect fit. So nothing like making life easy and saving a few dollars. We'll see you next time on Indian Preservation.